All right, guys, welcome back. Well, that last video raised a few eyebrows, didn't it? <laughs> Absolutely mad. It's definitely um, rattled a few cages, and um, yeah, people have sort of like resonated with um, with that. So I'm quite interested in that. Now, if you know a bit of background, if you know and you've followed my channel for a little while, you'll know that I've always been pretty kind of pro EV. Um, electric vehicles in general, I like because they have great performance and everything else. I've got nothing against like the technology um, itself. In fact, I've, I've played lots of parts in kind of helping people get into EVs, whether they be like e-bikes or whether it be, you know, other forms of kind of electric transport. But it's one of these things where it's going to be different for a lot of people. And I've seen this in the comments um, section where you know different people are sort of saying oh yeah but it's okay for me because i do this amount of miles and i can charge with solar and all this stuff so you know and i buy a second hand car and it's, it's it's like a different different thing you know absolutely fine now you will know that if you have been following the channel for a long time that i have never progressed to a full look at how lovely this is that i mean i've never progressed to a full size electric car like you know for my main sort of daily driver um, I've always kind of like got to that point and thought, oh, I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to do it. And then I go onto Tesla's website because probably realistically, that's going to be the only thing that, that, um, that I would go for because it, I mean, undeniably they're the best electric car. Um, but I just, you know, every time I just get this massive sense of kind of, I just get underwhelmed and I'm just like, ah, oh, yeah, I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be, be signing my life away for this. I don't want to pay this money every month. I don't want the, you know, a car based on tech. I don't want to be watched every second. I don't want to be, you know, the whole thing is, is controlled by the powers that be Tesla and they can decide if they want to turn on, on, on and off features, all of that crap. I don't want it. I do not want it. And this, this is why it's this real kind of like, you know, at the moment, everyone's talking about this, um, you know, own nothing and be happy. You know, that is one of the main factors that I've kind of, you know, stayed with petrol and um, ice cars, basically, for the, for the moment. I haven't even bought a hybrid. Now, I have done loads of reviews with electric cars, so I, I know what I'm talking about with electric vehicles. I've done loads of reviews on YouTube for companies like Audi, companies like Nissan, you know, I've done reviews, look back on the channel, you'll see the reviews and you'll see that, you know, most of the time I'm fairly impressed with it, but I wouldn't part with my own money for one of these things. Well, I'm just going to jump in here quickly because I found something whilst I was editing the video. Look at this, BMW, on BMW's website, you have to pay to have front seat heating. I don't know what car this is for, I don't really care. But look, seat heating quickly heats up your front seats at relaxing temperatures so you can adjust the multi-levels of intensity. Brilliant. What have we been doing for years? This is what I mean, guys. It's absolutely insane. What you've got to pay monthly now to have heated seats which are in your car when you buy them but you can't use them because it's software disabled. <laughs> what? Sorry guys, I'm gonna to have to look at my notes because I completely lost the thread of what was what I was talking about. Um, but yeah, basically, like you know, the acceleration's amazing in electric cars. The quiet ride can be nice on on you know long journeys. Um, I did find them soulless. You know, the ones that I've driven, pretty soulless. Um, Gone and I haven't driven a Porsche Taycan. Maybe that might be. I mean, there's no way I'm going to be buying that car because because of the price of it. But basically. Yeah, I, I mean, that might have a little bit of Porsche baked into it, which might make it, you know, a bit more fun. Um, you know, it, they just all feel like they are a bit like a computer on wheels. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, charging was always a pain. I've, I've, I've not really experienced any better. Uh, even just driving the Twizy around, I can use Type 2 chargers on that. They're pretty much terrible. Everyone I go to, there's always something wrong. Um, the best ones I've seen are probably Shell. Um, the Shell charge station, that's been quite good um, because, yeah, every time I've been to there at the local Waitrose, that is actually kind of, <laughs> say Waitrose, it sounds, makes me sound like a, um, but, <laughs> but yeah, there is, there is a, char a Shell charge station um, at the local Waitrose and that, that is where, what I use and I park there and just go somewhere else. Right, I'm going to carry on riding around here because there's a bunch of people over there that just sat down on the benches and I'll be causing noise pollution, shouting my head off. Yeah, the old e-bike's a great way to travel. If the weather was better, I'd be using this a lot more. But I, I mean, increasingly, I'm using this to get in and out of the town that I live close to because it is a nightmare going in to the town um, 
at any time now. There's no, there seems to be no good time to go into the town. Um, and this is a problem with a lot of these sort of towns where they kind of, they're like a through route. Um, you know, and I don't want them to really start making even more dual carriageways and messing up the green belt. But, <clears throat> you know, this is why these sort of vehicles are great because you can just hop on and, and get where you want to go. And it's that freedom aspect as well. It's like, you know, you're not, you haven't got to pay tax, you actually own this vehicle. So, you know, you're not um, subject to the DVLA. You're just the keeper of that vehicle, which is a bizarre thing to me. Um, you know, you don't actually own. Again, it's come back to that thing, you just don't, don't own anything. You know, <laughs> they can come and take anything away from you. But yeah, at the moment, it's like the ultimate freedom, really. You know, you can do what you want which is um, bound to stop soon. Right, I've just stopped up again. It's so amazing, look at this. Just such a beautiful place and it's literally on my doorstep. I, I come over all the time at the moment. It's just so good for the mind. Anyway, that's a nice looking bike. And that's what I was gonna come on to the fact with the EVs, the fact that a lot of the EVs are really, I just, I don't like them aesthetically. They just do look, do not look nice. The Tesla looks kind of okay from the front and it just kind of goes downhill towards the back. Um, you know, there's just, that is something that doesn't help, um, you know, my kind of transition to it. The fact that everything just, and everything's an SUV as well, apart from, you know, obviously Tesla. So yeah, they're just not aesthetically pleasing. Um, and it was really funny actually, because when I went on, I went on some social media group and some EV group right at the beginning when I was doing all this stuff. And um, uh, when I was uh, kind of early opinions I was talking about, and it was really EV focused, this group. And basically they were sort of just saying, Oh, I don't care what it looks like because I'm I'm inside. And it's like what? That is just completely kind of alien to me. And I, I was talking to Helen about this, and it was like that. There's no. That is a different culture. That's a different culture. That's not car culture. That's you know completely different. It did make me laugh, you know, because I, I just realised I was talking to a completely demographic, completely different demographic graphic of car user. Anyway. I've already always enjoyed a sense of individualism from my car choice. Um, my current car choices say a lot about my personality, I think. I mean, the modded Twizy is quirky and fun. Um, and then I've got a 450 brake horsepower stage three Audi TT, which is completely customized. Um, it's understated, but it'll bite you <laughs> if you provoke it. So, you know, make of this what you will, but there is an emotional connection between me and my vehicles. And I know there is for a lot of you guys too, as well. Um, you know, you just, you feel it, don't you? you? You feel the excitement when you walk up to your car and you like, you love your car. It is a feeling that, yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe not. If you don't, then that's just a different thing. Maybe that is not, you know, interesting or important to you. Um, you know, I understand there's a need to travel from A to B and it needs to be cost effective, safe and emotional, you know, connection is probably not a priority. That's going to be true for a lot of people. You know, that's fine but I do feel like we're being railroaded into this EV sort of thing at the moment. Um, there's a real conflict of interest though, because on one hand, you've got companies wanting you to spend money because they're obviously trying to sell you a car. So the car companies want you to buy something. And then there's the government who are kind of under pressure by all these other you know, external forces to do something about pollution and all, all of that. So the problem is the two don't go hand in hand because on one hand, you've got, you know, the business trying to sell you something and then the other hand really the best thing the the, the only solution to solve this is not to make more stuff <laughs> not to make new cars or create more waste you know and pollution in the in doing it that's not the solution solution surely really is to use what you got and maybe look to converting some of these existing vehicles to electric or hybrid i don't know if that i'm not saying it is a solution but it should be looked at really you know, and it's not hard to do that either because, you know, we've already seen there's companies out there that, you know, you can literally stick two or four hub motors wheels. They're basically wheels with a motor in. They can be put on anything now. You know, we, we obviously do e-bike kits and the same principles there. You just slap a wheel on and it becomes, becomes an electric vehicle. You know, you can put a battery in the boot, um, hook up the CAN bus of the car so it can use all the, all the stuff like the throttle pedal and the brakes and all the other safety things you need to do, um, you know, to stop this being really dangerous. <laughs> you know, you could, you could do that. You could absolutely do that with what's available now. Um, electric vehicles have been around for a long, 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 long time, or electric propulsion has, should I say. They've been, it's been around for a long, long time. So, 
you know, this is not rocket science. It's, it's a motor, a controller, an inverter type thing, or, uh, you know, if, that's, if it's an AC motor, um, and you've got a power source. That's it. You don't need to have like 50,000 50, cameras around the whole thing, screens wrapping around the dashboard. You know, you don't need all of that stuff to be an electric car. Just check I'm still recording. You know, this would also be lighter than a full EV as well, because, you know, you're not having to have this massive great battery. Then you'd have basically a vehicle that could probably do, you know, I don't know, 40, 50 miles maybe range, just putting around town, do all that stuff, not producing any pollution at all. Um, because the engine wouldn't be on and then if you want to do 200 miles then you can you can just turn on the engine and just go and it will charge the battery as well so that i mean using what you got and shoehorning something like that onto it would be would be like a better solution for one if, even if you didn't just just use what you've got and just that's it that would be fine but yeah you know the solution is not to just make more stuff and cause more problems cause more pollution and create more waste is it it's not it's not the solution the solution is to try and you know cut down on all of that like making more stuff producing more stuff trying to sort of you know get people to buy things that they don't really need but they're sort of duped into kind of thinking they do need it because of like you know ULEs and all these other things that are coming into play to try and you know, I mean, it's people on the outskirts of London that can't, literally probably can't afford to eat. And then you're telling them that they've, because they've got an old car, they've got to pay 12 pounds a day or whatever it is. I don't know the exact figures, but you know what I mean? Every day to drive this car. It's like, what, what world are we living in? And there's not really any other solution. Have you got to buy something new? None of those people are going to buy an electric car. You know, a lot of those people will probably just go, I'll just get rid of a car and do something else. Maybe that's what they want. Anyway, guys, food for thought. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Leave loads of comments down below because it really helps the algorithm. <laughs> no, seriously, just like, you know what I mean? Just talk about, talk about it amongst yourselves. I'll come in there where I can. I mean, it's, it's a really interesting thing to talk about. Um, I'm going to do more videos about this because there's a lot, of different, a lot of different subjects that, you know, I think do need to be kind of brought, brought to the surface a little bit. You know, this whole sort of thing of you know buying something new when you haven't when you don't really need it um and subscription based stuff like basically you know own nothing and you'll be happy i say try and own everything and be grumpy catch you next time